Some good news to report on nearly all fronts. Search patterns have been working really well. This week's Buzz Bite Report. This week's snapping it off the bottom. Auto chart live. You've got fish doing a number of different things. See a lot of them? Oh, yeah! They are heavy. Look at this giant. How's that? Shallow water fishing, hot angling tactics, and red hot bites from all over the upper Midwest. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Dave Sanda. And I'm Troy Lindner. And joining us later in today's show are BuzzBite reporters in the field with fishing updates from their local waters. And now as we're getting into June, most of the fish have finished spawning. They're back in the bays and along the shorelines, but all types of fish now are really starting to spread out throughout the water system. Yeah, it's, it's really important to know that the environment is changing. Early on, you know, in the upper Midwest, we've had all our weed cover in the shallows was flattened by ice. And now it's really flourishing, developing. It's actually pushing fish out of some areas, although some of our biggest largemouth uh, do stay like lily pad yeah. oriented in the backs of bays. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those fish are shifting to more main lake locations, but yet a number of them are still staying shallow. They don't necessarily drop deeper. So if you are prepared to fish in eight feet of water or less, using a lot of visual patterns, looking for the cover, you're gonna catch all different species of fish. And in fact, let's take a good look at some shallow water fishing patterns that apply all throughout our region. Anglers look forward to fishing in shallow water during spring when fish of all species flock to the shallows in search of warming water, food, and spawning habitat. The funny thing is, once fish finish spawning and disperse towards deeper water, it seems like few folks, other than bass and panfish anglers, fish shallow anymore. Everyone seems convinced that all of the big fish move to much deeper water for the summer, which isn't necessarily the case. It's easy to see why shoreline cover like fallen trees, bulrushes, docks and such are bass and panfish magnets. But did you know that walleyes also move shallow to feed under the right conditions? Especially during low light at dawn and dusk, at night, when it's windy, or frankly, whenever they darn well want. It's no secret that wind and waves pounding against shorelines are shallow walleye magnets. Or that waves sloshing across shallow boulders draw walleyes and muskies. Yet when it's calmer, you might find smallmouths using these same hideouts. Go figure. This summer, we challenge you to try fishing shallow areas under conditions where and when big fish are likely to be present. Because if they are, they intend to eat. And those are the ones you're after. <laughs> I really love fishing shallow, and I guess I like the visual experience of it. You, you look in where you're fishing, you're, I'm casting to a tree trying to catch a bass, I can see the fish hit, I'm very visual that way, and I think that's what appeals to me about fishing shallow. Well, you know, it's not just bass fishing, which I know you do a lot in your tournaments, but you can catch pike, you can catch walleyes, you can catch big muskies up shallow. Fish that are in shallow water are there for one reason, they're there to eat. They're not messing around. And, and as they shift more to main lake areas, some will drop deep, but the percentage of real good biters are still gonna be up shallow. And so definitely something that you wanna try. And right now it's time for our Angling Buzz news for this week. It's free fishing this weekend in Wisconsin, June 4th and 5th. You can fish anywhere in Wisconsin without a license or trout stamp, even if you're a non-resident. Of course, all regulations and rules still apply. There's also a free fishing weekend happening in North Dakota June 4th and 5th. This is for residents only. And again, all rules and regulations apply. Muskie openers happening this weekend in Minnesota. And remember, the new Minnesota catch and release length record for muskellunge will be starting this season. From one musky fisherman to you, good luck this weekend, I'll be out there. Now you may have seen videos online about people hand feeding bass, but how about walleyes? Matt Benson captured some amazing footage at Bowie's Fly-In Lodge on Trout Lake in Northwest Ontario. According to Matt, there are four to nine pounders like that stacked up from spring all the way through fall. That's incredible. Don't change that channel because when we come back, we're going to head on up to Lake Winnebagoshish in northern Minnesota. It's the site of one of the finest shallow water walleye fisheries on the face of the earth.
Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wild. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz, and now it's time for a highlight destination feature, Lake Winnebagashish, also known as Big Winnie, an absolutely amazing multi-species fishery. Yeah, Winnie is a great big windswept body of water with big pike, big muskies, shallow water largemouths, uh, really known for ice fishing for perch in the wintertime, but it's most famous for the shallow water walleye bite. In fact, this is where a lot of snap jigging or pop jigging tactics were developed for walleyes, and they are now used all over the upper Midwest. Let's take a quick look at Lake Winnie, see what it has to offer, and you'll want to put it on your list of waters to fish later this year. Lake Winnebagashish, referred to as Big Winnie by regional anglers, is a huge, windswept lake fed by the Mississippi River. It features a torrid, shallow water walleye bite most of the year, with a deep live bait rigging and jigging bite in the cutfoot Sioux portion of the lake in fall. Winnie is the birthplace of snap jigging for walleyes, developed by legendary fishing guide Dick Grizz Brzezinski. The Grizz discovered that active walleyes atop shallow flats weren't spooked by running an outboard over them. Moving quickly while snapping a jig and minnow combo on a long line behind the boat, the Grizz triggered strikes like crazy resulting in 100 fish days for his clients. Today, we now know that snap jigging soft baits on jig heads works equally well under most circumstances. And pesky perch can't steal your bait. There's so much fun in the spring like this. Speaking of perch, Big Winnie puts up some good ones and is particularly known for a ferocious winter bite through the ice. Big pike inhabit Winnie's weed beds, as do mammoth muskies. This is where Minnesota's 54 pound state record muskie was caught, and there are plenty more where that one came from. Add in big crappies and bluegills, and beefy largemouth bass in bulrushes and wild rice, and Lake Winnemagoshes offers something for anglers of all types and stripes, both here and on surrounding smaller waters as well. If you just want to get away from it all and catch plenty of fish along the way, Winnie is the place to go. It's like stepping back into a simpler time when families and friends vacationed and fished together without modern distractions. When you're off the lake, take a leisurely stroll through the pristine Chippewa National Forest or enjoy some of the local hospitality. While time may not actually stand still here, there's no pressure to meet deadlines either. Folks here are friendly, not fancy, and are in no hurry to send you on your way. A nice change of pace in your kind of place. For more information on fishing and fun in the Lake Winnebagashish area, check out lakewinnie.net. Well, I don't know about you, Troy, but I'm up for catching 100 walleyes a day. Yeah, you can count me in on that. As long as I can bring my bass gear, the shallow water bass fishing there is incredible. And speaking of incredible fishing, now it's time to join the first of our BuzzBite reporters in the field with updates from their local waters. Our first BuzzBite report is from Charlie Moore 
over in the Glacial Lakes region of South Dakota. For the walleyes, two big things to know right now. One, if you find curly pond weed, fish it. Fish it with a four inch power minnow or any plastic that you like. If there's curly pond weed, the fish are in it or adjacent to it, that's a good bite. If you are not finding weeds, move out onto the flats, eight to 10 foot of water. Get out your favorite trolling crank. I've been using the Wally Shad. It's been a great bait for me this year, uh, especially this chartreuse perch. For the smallmouth, they are on the flats adjacent to shoreline. They haven't moved out very far on those flats yet. You can throw any type of jerk bait that you want. That's been good. Also, the spinner bait has been stellar for me with the smallmouth so far this year. With the white bass, they're going crazy. That bite is happening everywhere. You can catch them on jigs. You can catch them on cranks. I'm even catching them on topwater baits, which has been great. So, Fishing is just starting to pick up. Get out on the water. I'm Charlie Moore with your Buzz Bite Report. Next up, let's check in with Jason Mitchell up at Devil's Lake, North Dakota. We've had a lot of up and down weather on Devil's Lake. A week ago, we had 80 degree temperatures, hardly any wind. That water temperature really started to climb. Then we had a pretty big front that came through with really strong winds where that water temperature dropped 10 to 15 degrees on most places in the lake. Now the sun's back out. We've had some pretty nice days, but now we're having wind. And so that water temperature is starting to creep up. We're finding anywhere from low 50s all the way to low 60s. What's been working really well for me here this spring, here this past couple of days, has been trolling crankbaits in shallow water. I'm pulling them anywhere from five to seven feet of water, and I've been having more success doing that than I have been pitching. The reason being is that these fish are very specific as far as being on a depth, and you can keep that crankbait in front of the fish for a long period of time, whereas when you're casting, you're just in and out. You're, you're in front of that zone so quick before you're back to the boat. And so on these off days, you know, trolling cranks can be really effective. I'm running a, a Samo SDR bullhead about 15 feet behind a planer board or 25 to 20 feet behind the back of the boat, focusing in that five to seven foot depth. And uh, that's how we've been catching some really nice fish. When we come back, more buzz bite reports from the field as angling buzz continues. My dad was never too busy to take me fishing. It was our special time together. He taught me which lures to use, how to cast, how to land big fish. Some days were better than others. Now that I'm older, I treasure those memories of our time on the water and am glad that I can make new memories for my kids. Mills Fleet Farm, helping to create outdoor memories since 1955. We're back. And you know, besides the great smallmouth fishing, which we've been hearing from a lot of our reporters, the largemouth fishing has been excellent. I've had the opportunity to fish in the Dakotas and here in central Minnesota and catching some pretty good bass. But back to bigger waters, let's check in with Tony Roach over at Lake Mille Lacs where he's catching walleyes and smallmouth bass. There we go, fish on. It's been a fantastic week out here. I love this time of year because I get to pitch jigs along structure, whether it's rocks or weeds especially along reefs, you know, and it's quite different than vertical jigging. I'm actually pitching it out there and working it back to the boat. Works fantastic on reefs, on weed lines on Mille Lacs. Puts a lot of fish in the boat, walleyes and bass alike. Let me show you. Oh, there's one right there. And you know, as the water warms up, the faster you can jig, the faster your cadence, things just speed up and these fish get more aggressive. Been putting a ton of fish in the boat today. Not just walleyes, but big smallmouth bass. It's been a lot of fun fishing out here. Thank you, Tony. Now let's check in with Toby Kavalibug up at Lake Winnebagashish and Leech Lake. Both lakes right now are kicking out fish in 11 to 14 feet of water. They're still close to shore on the north end of Winnie up in that uh, cut foot area um, with the south southeast wind that we've had a little bit of and today it's blowing a lot which is why I'm in my truck. The, uh, the, uh, the areas up there were really good today, 11 to 14 feet of water, and it's the same with Leech Lake, but Modder Tail all the way over to Two Points. Any place where there's sand and a little bit of rock, 
The shiners are up there and the walleyes are really, really feeding. So a jig and a shiner, long line in behind the boat, 0.8 to 1 miles an hour is real productive on the shoreline breaks. And the fish are starting to move out to the hump. So kind of an early season pattern already. The water went to 60 degrees and uh, it's, it's warming up and the fish are moving. So here's the ticket. Get away from the boats, long line, jigs and shiners, snap jig them, moving pretty quick, 0.8, 1 mile an hour, even up to 1.5 at times uh, yesterday. But the fish were absolutely on fire on leech yesterday. Uh, right in the middle of the day you just had to get the get it away from the boat and get away from the crowds and you catch a lot of fish so that's your report for leech lake and winnebagosh for this week's angling buzz fishing report our next report comes from billy rosner on lake vermilion had a great week guiding this past week caught a lot of fish from six feet of water out to 30 feet of water got into some really nice big walleyes it was kind of an interesting deal i was marking them on my hummingbird Helix getting these nice marks in about this 100 yard area. I couldn't get him to go, so I laid down a bunch of waypoints. Came back in like an hour or two. I thought maybe a change, it got a little windier out. And I started pulling a rig with a number two wide gap VMC hook. And I was 0 0.5, 0 0.8, I'd slow down, kick it up, and I got those big fish to start going. In about an hour and a half, we caught six of them from 22 to 27 inches. That was a lot of fun. Croppies are in spawning, doing their thing. They're pretty easy to get right now. Also, I've been seeing a lot of muskies in shallow. They're wrapping up their spawn, and that'll be opening up here pretty quick. So have a great week, travel safe, have fun out there, and we'll talk to you next time. Now let's head east into Wisconsin and check in with Luke Kavacek up at Shawamigan Bay. It wasn't that long ago we were running the boat in a stiff northwest wind and catching pre-spawn smile up in a snowstorm. Uh, the weather has straightened out and the fishing game has totally changed fairly rapidly in the past few weeks. We've got a big bump in water temperatures, uh, it's pushed a lot of fish to spawn rather early this year. Um, I'm, I'm actually seeing empty beds here and there, uh, so there's definitely post-spawn fish that have been hitting um, off the edges of some of these spawning flats. Um, I'm having my, both my gear and fly guys come out with me really early in the morning uh, to beat some of the angling pressure that we deal with this time of year, and it also allows us to throw top water and pick off players early in the morning, um, which is a really fun way to get these fish. Um, as the sun comes up, I'm pushing out off the flats and uh, targeting those, those post-spawn fish uh, that are sitting a little bit deeper, uh, throwing extremely sm small soft plastics and heavy flies for that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on right now, um, and we'll talk to you next week. Up next is Justin Geike in North Central Wisconsin. Hey, about the only thing you need to do to catch a fish locally lately is have your boat in the water. It's been really, really good. But the whole key right now moving forward is pay attention to water temperature. Here locally in the Wasa area, crappies and smallmouth that are done and spawns over. But start to move further to the north and we can find colder water temperatures to find these fish still really shallow and really, really active. If you find you're on a lake and it's not real good because it's too late, just move across the street. Maybe that lake's a little bit deeper and a little bit clearer. If you're looking to catch walleyes, hey, after hours activities with slip bobber and live bait combinations jigs have been really good. Bluegills here in Wausau are really heating up shallow, and that's even happening all the way up in the Monaco area as well. Hey, if you're a musky fisherman, look for shallow bays with emergent vegetation, throw things like twitch baits and small bucktails really fast. Good luck on the water. For our final report, Ben Wolf over in Michigan. It's been a fantastic week here in Michigan, and we've got some great angling opportunities. Grand Traverse Bay is the place to be if you want to cast for big lake trout as well as get some cisco, otherwise known as tulabees or lake herring. And we're also starting to see some really nice whitefish action as well. Casting anywhere from 50 feet all the way up to 20 feet with blade baits like this gold one or the silver one, that's been the ticket. Lake St. Clair for bass fishing continues to be red hot. The offshore bite for salmon in ports like Manistee, in Grand Haven and Muskegon continues to be really fantastic for the two and the three year old king salmon and coho salmon. We have a brown drake hatch going on on the rivers right now and for the fly anglers, a little dry fly, BWO style or brown drake style, they're gonna get the action from those really feisty brown trout and resident rainbows and brook trout as well. For more information or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call or look us up on the web sportfishmichigan.com. And coming up next after the break, our cool products and technique of the week.
Lick Winnebagoshish, Big Winnie. Let's go back in time to a real up north vacation spot, a place where memories are made. Big Winnie is situated in the Chippewa National Forest and gateway to some of Minnesota's finest trophy walleye, pike, perch, untapped bass, and musky fishing. It's the perfect place for family and friends when you really want to get away. Go to lakewinnie.net to find our little piece of heaven. High-tech construction, building with old world craftsmanship. Pride and passion, the same qualities that define high-tech construction go into every project we build. With meticulous attention to detail, our experienced tradesmen bring your floor plan to life. Our unwavering customer service results in a truly satisfying building experience. High Tech Construction, where technology meets old world craftsmanship. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be. Until I added smooth moves to my boat, it's four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. And we're talking shallow water. I want to discuss a little about walleye and bass fishing. Right here, this is a nice little walleye box. You go into the store, you'll see lots of different jigs. Keep it simple right here. You got a short shank and you got a long shank jig. Think of these as delivery systems. Shorter shank for live bait fishing and a longer shank like this as a soft plastic delivery system. I'll show you right here, I have one. Boot tail, works perfect. And you've seen uh, the emergence of soft plastics on the back of these jig heads for walleyes become more and popular each year. Hot skirts, right here from VMC, this also works. So when, you, when you're just looking at jigs, you wanna look at short shank and long shank and then put on the back whatever you want. But you can also get them pre-rigged right here. This is the Wild Eye Swim Shad from Storm. This is kind of an all-in-one thing right here. It's got the jig already built into the bait. And moving ahead for bass, I think uh, stick baits are probably some of the most popular presentations for shallow water bass. And right here, Yamamoto Senko. This is really nice, it's the five inch Yamamoto. And then Big Bites also makes a nice wacky stick. This has an O-ring built in the inside. And this is wacky rig right here, it's really nice. Another way to show the fish a little bit something different. This is pretty neat. This is kind of a shaky head presentation. This is nice dragging along the bottom on rocks. You just throw the, the Senko, your stick bait right on like that. Up next, the magnetic tool holder combo from Rapala. This kind of gives you the three basic tools you need in the boat. A nice strong side cutter, super line scissors, and pliers. You can also bolt this anywhere you want in your boat. You know right back where everything goes. If you fish with Somebody that doesn't always put the tools back in place, I'm not gonna name any names, but this is a nice way to keep everything compact and organized. And we can't talk summertime fishing without sunglasses. These are from iGogs. iGogs make a lot of moderately priced sunglasses. If two or $300 glasses are your thing, that's fine. I want performance and value. These come in a lot of different sizes, different, different shapes in different lenses, whatever you want. These are really nice. These are the guide fish eyes from iGogs. It's a great price. Check them out. And again, you can find all these products and more at your local Mills Fleet Farm store and online at fleetfarm.com. Up next from Excel Outdoors is the power plug. These come in two different sizes for your light holders. That is, this is a three pin. This is a two pin base. This is for powering Little electronics, it has a USB port. Both of these have, you can see right here, there's a USB port and this is a 12 volt, 2.1 amp, uh, kind of a cigarette lighter that you would have in your car to plug in, you know, your electric fillet knife, it works really nice. You can plug that in there. You can also plug in your aerators in this. It's a nice way to have portable power when you need to charge. This is the power plug from ExcelOutdoors.com. And this brings us to our technique of the week. I think you're gonna like this. It's called Get the Net. Oh, God. 
When that time comes and you've got that trophy of a lifetime up to the boat, you want that fish in the worst way. So logically, the answer would be to have the biggest net you can get. You can't miss, right? Well, that's not quite always the case. If you're after big fish like muskies, big cats, or sturgeon, large deep nets allow you to not only capture, but also leave the fish in the water until you have all the proper tools at hand to unhook and safely release them with the least amount of stress to such large bodied fish. The problem is that big nets take up a lot of room in the boat. So if you're mainly targeting crappies and or bass, you want to downsize to something that's quicker on the draw and easier to handle. Something in that 20 inch diameter range. This also is a good net for most walleye situations, unless you're a big troller. Good trolling nets, no matter if you're after walleye, salmon, trout, you name it, requires a little larger diameter hoop with a long reinforced handle to reach out well beyond the motor to get them. I suspect more fish have been lost just out of reach than at any other time during the whole fight. Now, you got the proper net in hand. Your fishing buddy is counting on you to get the fish in the boat. The heat is on. Here's the main thing to keep in mind. Don't have the net sitting in the water. One quick rush from the fish, the hooks get snagged outside the net, and the party's over. Hold the far edge of the net just over the gunnel with the bottom of the mesh of the net pinched under your fingers closest to the hoop so that it's less likely to get hung up on cleats, rod tips, or anything. Now don't just jump the gun. Wait for the fish to get tired out and coming towards you head first. Do not net the fish tail first. It gives the fish an easy way to escape. Once you scoop the fish, lift the net up fast. This makes it less likely that the fish will jump out of the net. There you have it. You're happy, your buddy's happy, and there will be peace in the boat for the rest of the trip. That's some great information. And the one thing for sure, if you are using the net a lot, well, it means you're catching fish. Never forget, the best fishing partner is a good net man. That's all we have time for this week. I'm Dave Sanda. And I'm Troy Lindner. And if you haven't had a chance yet, please stop by your local Mills Fleet Farm store, enter our sweepstakes, and have a chance to fish with us in the awesome Brainerd Lakes area. And remember to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species when you do go out boating and fishing. Clean, drain, and dry when you're done. Next week on Angling Buzz, it's all about finding fish. In the meantime, check us out on the web at anglingbuzz.com. See what our buzz bite reporters in the field have to say. And as I always like to say, they're going to help you put more and bigger fish in the boat in the weeks ahead. This week's buzz bite report. Charlie Moore. Brian Brostock. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay to Lake Sakakuya. Lake Superior. Madison, Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week. <laughs>